I'm happy today. Oh, yes, I'm happy today. In Jesus Christ, I'm happy today because he's taken all my sins away. And that's why I'm happy today. I'm praying today. Oh, yes, I'm praying today. In Jesus Christ, I'm praying today because he's taken all my sins away. And that's why I'm praying today. I'm singing today. Oh, yes, I'm singing today. In Jesus Christ, I'm singing today because he's taken all my sins away. And that's why I'm singing today. I'm sharing my faith. Oh, yes, I'm sharing my faith in Jesus Christ. I'm sharing my faith because he's taken all my sins away. And that's why I'm sharing my faith. I'm happy today. Oh, yes, I'm praying today. In Jesus Christ, I'm singing today because he's taken all my sins away. And that's why I'm sharing my faith. So we're taking a look at the book. We're looking at 2 Corinthians this week. And we're going to have Enoch now do our devotional. Go ahead, Enoch. Good evening, family. It is uh, such a great honor to be talking here about uh, 2 Corinthians here. And there's quite a bit to unpack here. Uh, But first of all, we're going to start with the background. Uh, So 2 Corinthians, well, first we'll talk about 1 Corinthians. Uh, The letter of 1 Corinthians came actually as a result of a bad report of the Christians in Corinth rebelling. And you may know this from last week. Uh, When the Christians read Paul's first letter, uh, they didn't really listen and they just kept doing the wrong things. And this led Paul to pay Corinth a very hard visit. And after that, he sent them a second letter. Uh, but this wasn't 2 Corinthians. This second letter was uh, a separate letter. Uh, chapter 2, verses 3 and 4 references this second letter. And it was after the painful visit, which was after the first letter, as you can see in that little graph uh, down below there. So in actuality, uh, 2 Corinthians is a third letter to the Corinthian church that is mainly reconciling with them after these many hardships that happened over the years. Uh, So this reconciliation was a huge main part of the book. And, well, why did the Corinthians reject Paul in the first place? It was really because they valued educated, successful speakers over the uh, admittedly underwhelming skills of Paul when he would uh, come up and teach them. He wasn't a very good speaker. Um, And Paul argues by showing the paradox of the cross, or what I like to call the croxymoron, and how it would it should transform us. Uh, I mean, how was Jesus gloriously exalted through his suffering and death on the cross? His decision to step down from heaven to be brutally murdered by people is the most humiliating yet most amazing decision ever made. Well, so this gospel should motivate us to follow in Jesus' footsteps. Even if we think we're not that talented or we wouldn't really uh, affect people's lives in in a good way with any of our talents, uh, it shouldn't matter because uh, Jesus humiliated himself in, in the worst way possible and still came out on top uh, as the king of, of the universe. Uh, Paul already shows an example of Jesus by merc- mercifully forgiving the Corinthians for their mistakes and even lifting them up. Uh, we can see that right now if, if we read chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. Uh, it says, that is why I wrote to you as I did, so that when I do come, I won't be grieved by the very ones who ought to give me the greatest joy. Surely you all know that my joy comes from your being joyful. I wrote that letter in great anguish, with a troubled heart and many tears. I didn't want to grieve you, but I wanted to let you know how much love I have for you. So another example of following in Jesus' humble footsteps is in the offering of money. This money was... uh, going towards charitable causes for the Jewish Christians that are being persecuted. Uh, In 1 Corinthians 16, uh, we see that uh, they were already uh, doing fundraisers for uh, the Jewish Christians that are being persecuted. Uh, But the church in Corinth, they weren't paying attention to that. They weren't raising any money. And even though the money was for such a good cause, Paul explains in uh, chapter 8, verses 7 through 9, that it wasn't even about the money. And uh, 
uh, we'll see what that verse says. Uh, chapter, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, 7 through 9. Since you excel in so many ways in your faith, your gifted speakers, he references those gifted speakers again, your knowledge, your enthusiasm, and your love from us, I want you to excel also in this gracious act of giving. I'm not commanding you to do this, but I am testing how genuine your love is by comparing it with the eagerness of the other churches. You know the generous grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty he could make you rich, the proxy moron. Uh, so it was really about imitating Jesus' grace and how much he gave for us. Now, finally, even though there was reconciliation, Paul wasn't done with the Corinthians. They still had a lot of work to do, and Paul had to hold them accountable somehow. So in the final chapter, uh, he challenges them to examine themselves. Uh, 2 Corinthians 13 verse 5 says, Examine yourselves to see if your faith is genuine. Test yourselves. Surely you know that Jesus Christ is among you. If not, you have failed the test of genuine faith. As you test yourselves, I hope you will recognize that we have not failed the test of apostolic authority. Uh, so in conclusion, we can see that the overarching theme of 2 Corinthians is the Croxymoron. It's about Christians who lost their zeal and fell into the trap of, of valuing superficial things of the world rather than what matters, which is God's word. Once you commit yourself to the word, everything else falls into place, thanks to the Holy Spirit. And that right there is the cross you are. We don't even have to do any of the heavy lifting to take the opportunity of Jesus' grace. It's already been done on the cross. And even right now, the Spirit is continuously doing your heavy lifting as long as your heart is in the right place. So I encourage you right now to take Paul's challenge. Examine yourself, especially as we participate in these discussions. Be honest with your group and really, really test yourself to see if you've been doing the right thing all along. Thank you for listening, and thanks to the Bible Project for inspiring the majority of this lesson. God bless. Okay, this brings our Bible class to a close. Um, thank you, Enoch, for that uh, wonderful lesson, and um, hope you all had a wonderful discussion um, in your various groups. Lord, the light of your love is shining in the midst of the darkness shining. Jesus, light of the world, shine upon us. Set us free by the truth you now bring us. Shine on me. Shine on me. Shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory, blaze, spirit blaze. Set our hearts on fire, flow, river flow, flood the nations with grace and mercy. Send forth your word. Lord, and let there be light. Send forth your word, Lord, and let there be light.